We're just hours away from the beatification mass for Father Solanus Casey. It's the step before sainthood. Thousands of Catholics are expected to attend the event, but what does it mean for everyone else? 7 Action News reporter Jennifer Ann Wilson is live at the Capuchin Soup Kitchen in Detroit with this importance of this event. Jennifer? Yeah, I'm actually standing next to you can see an incredible rack of salmon ready, waiting to go into the oven. And we've got Chef Jay Brown over here who is uh, preparing some salmon that's just come out of the oven. All for a very special dinner. Friars coming from all over the world right here tonight in advance of the beatification ceremony tomorrow. Now, normally, uh, they're cooking for the needy in the community. And Chef, how many needy do you serve on a regular basis? We serve anywhere from 1,200 to 1,400 people a day. Okay, 12 to 1,400 people a day. And now back in the day, you had to be Catholic and in need in order to be able to come here for a free meal. But that's all changed. You also used to have to be Catholic in order to volunteer. Now, is that still the case? Uh, no, it's not. Anyone can volunteer. You don't have to be Catholic. And anybody can come in and eat. You don't necessarily don't have to be homeless. You know, you know, anybody in the community can come in and get a free plate. I love that. And that is all because of Father Solanus. Father Solanus said, hey, anyone in need of a meal can come on in, no questions asked. And anybody who wants to help meet that need can come together and join us to do so. He really played a big part in breaking down barriers here in Detroit. Father Solanus Casey rose above expectations and limitations after failing out of seminary. He was eventually ordained into priesthood but not allowed to preach or receive confession. He was in charge of the altar boys, you know, so really like that was the extent of what his responsibilities were. He was also tasked with opening the door and welcoming people to church. From the poorest to the wealthiest, from uh, Catholics, uh, Protestants, uh, whoever, they all came and they all felt listened to and cared for. But welcoming and helping non-Catholics wasn't a popular thing to do. That was pretty unusual back then. It did set an example others now follow. I think we in the church have caught up with him decades later. He was a man known for his great love, miraculous healing abilities, and acceptance of all people. Now one step from becoming a saint. No one cares whether he was book smart. They're moved by his heart. This is a, a, just a great story of, of hope for us, yeah, of what was and what can still be. We in Detroit need a saint, and in my eyes, he already is. As a man who invested in the people of Detroit during his life, many think Father Solanus in his death is still interceding for our city. He waited until the city revival began so that he could be part of it. Okay. Well, preparations still underway for tomorrow's ceremony. Again, the dinner, special dinner for friars from all over the world happening here tonight. And then tomorrow, 400 buses filled with people planning on attending tomorrow's ceremony will begin to enter into the city of Detroit. And I'm told at his funeral, 20,000 people came. Pretty special for somebody who was considered at one time just a doorman. Reporting live in Detroit, Jennifer Ann Wilson, 7 Action. Extraordinary event. Jennifer Ann, thank you very much. The mass of beatification for Father Solanus Casey will take place tomorrow, 4 o'clock at Ford Field. Sold out, of course. Uh, we'll be live streaming that beatification on our website at WXYC.com.